Hey, welcome back, my fellow humble investors. It's me, ET, and remember, I'm not a financial advisor, I'm not your financial advisor. I'm just a self-taught investor who likes to talk about good companies in particular. I love talking about Humble. This week's video, we're going to take a look at what happened last week, uh, ending uh, 4 June, 2021. And uh, I'm also talk to you a little bit about my thesis when it comes to what we're doing when it comes to the NFT sector. So let's get to it. All right, let's take a look at what happened last week. All right, last week, we had the completion of the Tickery acquisition. That's all said and done, it is a done deal. They're now officially part of the Humble family. Uh, I will have a link to the actual press release for this in the description below. But also, they announced Athletes First, the collaboration with Athletes First. Now, if you can know, if you remember a few months back when they started with the NFTs, they talked about, uh, actually they did, I believe uh, the last time he was, he was on CNBC, they mentioned uh, Dak Prescott, Aaron Rodgers, they also mentioned Athletes First. But now this here is a done deal. That collaboration with Athletes First, uh, especially when it comes to the NFTs, I think it's going to be monumental. Uh, once again, I'll put the link to that press release in the description below. And on Friday, we were on, uh, Brian Foote was on uh, Fox Business with Making Money with Charles Payne. Overall, it was a good interview. From the tweet that I seen, George Sharp did he thought it was a bad idea. But that's his opinion. But overall, this was a much better interview than the one with CNBC. But you gotta realize one thing. When you when you look at this interview, and uh, I'll have a copy of the interview along with my reaction as this interview is going on, uh, right after we finish with the board. So once we go over the price, uh, action for last week i'll also include that video along with my reactions to that video but uh overall you, you got to realize that charles Payne, the topic of his his uh segment is making money he's focusing in on companies he's focusing in on companies that can make money for us well, not only for himself but also for him because he sounds like he, he i got the impression that if he's not a shareholder, he will be a shareholder. And I'm pretty sure that if he was, he would have to have disclosed that. But uh, a lot of uh, good information came out from that. Short, but sweet, but powerful. And the last thing here is, this is our second week where we had, we finished the week on an uptrend, a five day uptrend for the whole week. Second consecutive week. Let's go ahead and make it three. Now, let's talk about the NFT. I call it the NFT building blocks. Tickery. Tickery now is a done deal. Tickery in itself can be a, a major player when it comes to NFTs. Not only are we, not only are we, um, you know, on the ticketing aspect of it, but also creating NFTs from those various types of sporting events. Um, both when it comes to audio, photography, as well as video. And that leads us into the next one, Monster. The company that we acquired that uh, does a lot of trailers for uh, uh, movies that are released, uh, you know, the major blockbusting movies that were released and they do the trailers for that. Think about it, what's gonna happen at these sporting events we get together and give them reels of certain events, those are gonna turn into uh, NFTs. And now, because we also are in collaboration with Athletes First, 
this all fits together when it comes to that NFT market. In our NFT gallery that we launched, the first full week that we had the auctions, only eight pictures, eight pictures, ended up garnering about t- over $26,000 in winning bids. Now, how much of that comes to Humble? I don't know, but still, that's just to show the potential of this. And once all of this gets started, with tickery and those sporting events, with working with athletes first and working with Monster. Can you imagine the impact that that's gonna have? I think that we will be the leader when it comes to anything dealing with NFTs in the future. And remember, all of this is done on blockchain. I think that we are the leading company out there when it comes to blockchain technology across a lot of different spectrums including the financial spectrum. So that's really my thesis really on uh, where we stand when it comes to NFTs, our building blocks for NFTs and our future for that. Um, I don't think, you know, I've I've always wondered whether or not this is a fad or not. My whole opinion was if it's a fad, fine, let's take advantage of it. If it's not a fad, then that's even a better thing. That, That basically means we're going to continue to get to to generate revenue from this. Humble, it's a digital payment service and it's taking the investment world by storm, looping in both the Reddit and crypto crowds. And now, well, Wall Street is taking notice. The company CEO Brian Foote joins me now. And Brian, let's just start off. Tell us a little bit about uh, what Humble does that other digital payment services don't. Hi, Charles. Nice to be with you. Yeah, so we're a platform, not just a payment services company. So average customer right now has about 60 to 90 applications on their phone. So we're trying to package up a more intelligent swipe left, swipe right continuum uh, for people to be able to buy, sell, trade, invest, and pay uh, from one modular application. So we think we have a really uh, strong opportunity there to package up the next generation of the web. All right, so one area that you're a big player in already are these NFTs. I want you to talk a little bit about your unique approach to this and how you, you know, you're talking about monetizing things like they've never been monetized before. Oh, oh look out, an look out. NFT structure or catalog. Home or run. Something. <laughs> yeah, I see you have our slide up. Thank you so much for that. Um, we have this uh, structure that we've built out where we think folks are going to be able to engage with asset tokenization on blockchain, meaning the ability to buy a ticket, um, commemorate that ticket as an NFT, uh, trade it with someone on a secondary marketplace. So blockchain opens up these really exciting new asset classes that Humble intends to package up for the customer. Where are you with re- Oh, there's more to it than that. Hopefully that, what about <laughs> Tickery? I think you mentioned that he was referring to that, but you got uh, Monster. Why not talk about Monster? Why not talk about... Um, Oh, athletes first. And uh, the, the monster acquisition, the collaboration with athletes first. My goodness, that in itself could to just put the NFT sector on notice. Well, hopefully it's still he'll get to that. But that was that was the perfect slow pitch for a home run. With respect, I listened to your call, your fifth shareholder call. I found it to be very intriguing. I learned a lot about it, but you have an aggressive, I mean, very aggressive uh, plan. I mean, essentially you want to conquer the world and you're looking at three specific areas. Where are you with respect to to achieving it so far? Yeah, well, we're we're in about our sixth month as a public business. We just announced uh, this morning that we've acquired a a ticketing company, Tickery, that has a great footprint in Latin America and the Caribbean corridor. So We're going to start small, um, win in very tactical zones like peer-to-peer remittances, uh, buy buy crypto, earn interest, um, and then gravitate towards other markets through distribution partners that can help us on the ground there. So um, while our technologies may be expansive in what they can serve for customers around the world, we intend to move very methodically in terms of our rollout plans. Most reviews I've read uh, sort of said, hey, you know, you're compared to the PayPal, of course, digital wallets. But you say you want to sort of be the Amazon of digital assets. There you go. There we go. Explain that again. You know, it's it's so intriguing. And it seems like this vertical growth opportunities for you. Knock it out. Bam! 
Thank you. Yeah, so what we did was we're students of history. So we went back and studied the FANG stocks from Wave 1, um, some of the Web 2 companies, what they did to package up really material step functions in human technology. And that's what we're trying to do with blockchain tokenization of assets, which can apply to anything like payments, ticketing, NFTs, or some of our leading investment products that um, are available across active, thematic, or index strategies for our customers. Right. So blockchain tokenization offers this sort of panacea of things that you can do with it, and we want to just tighten that up and package it into the swipe left, swipe right. Last time it was going down as it, be as it was talking now. To experience that technology, because it is so new and it can be very intimidating. Right. But what Humble is doing is sitting over the top of those technology innovations and packaging them up for the customer. Not unlike what Netflix did with content or Amazon right. did with e-commerce. Brian, I don't. I just got less than a minute, but I got to ask you about this. You have yeah. an enormous following. An That's enormous right. Following, people believe you're going to achieve this. Your stock rallied a thousand percent right out the gate this year. It's pulled back. I guess shorts have piled on. I mean, you know, you're carrying a lot of weight on your shoulders. What do you want to say to these shareholders who believe in you and they put everything into this? Yes, yeah, we are. I, I sit about at night, you know, looking at the ceiling, nervous about executing for everybody. But we have a great team around us. We're well capitalized. We're achieving some M&A goals that will help us grow faster. Um, and we take it very seriously. We want to win for people and, and our shareholders with whom we have a very direct relationship uh, and, and, and yeah. to whom we represent very seriously. So, yeah, we're, we're keen to get this thing done and we're going to come to work every day until we do. Well, the stock went up a thousand percent. You didn't sell any of your own shares. Uh, I know you're committed to this. I hope you come back as you continue to grow. Congratulations, and we'll talk to you again real soon, Brian. Thank you, Charles. I appreciate it. Nice to see you. Okay, here is the uh, press release uh, from Humble announcing the strategic uh, collaboration with Athletes First. In, and let's see, Humble announced today it has retained Athletes First as a strategic consultant to focus on the development of new business verticals in such areas as non-fungible tokens, NFTs, digital media, and ticketing. Now, with this also, you got to real you got to look at some of the uh, clients of Athlete First. The most notable of here of the active clients, or the active players, should I say? is uh, Aaron Rodgers. Where is that? There it is, Aaron Rodgers. And if you notice, you've seen the, his jersey in the background, but it also talks about the Hall of Famers, such as Steve Young, which he also had the jerseys uh, displayed in the background. Uh, at the bottom is the link, but also you can find the link in the description. All right, so what's next? Here is the press release for the completion of the Tickery acquisition. Let's look at the price action. On uh, Friday morning, it opened at 143. It closed at 154. Uh, here is a five-day chart, and we can see that uh, for the last five trading days, the high was $1.75 and the low was 132, and it closed at 154. So nice price action. The volume on Friday was 16 million, and that was up about uh, a little bit over, not quite 3 million from the 10 day average volume. And here is the five day trend line. As you can see, it's a rising trend line for the second week in a row. Let's go for week number three. Here is Humble side by side with Fortly. As you guys already know, Fortly is my indirect play also with Humble. And for the short volume on that Friday, the shorts are still out there. Um, on Friday, you're talking about 52% of the volume was shorts. And once again, Humble is uh, leading the pack when it comes to the 50 most searched stocks within the last 72 hours. Um, also, if you look at this here, you see Boeing is there and also AMC. And we all know what happened with AMC last week. There, there was a very prominent uh, short squeeze on AMC last week. And this is my current position. 
Currently, uh, with Humble, I am down 35%. And with Forwardly, I'm down 25%. I'm not worried about it. I'm still going to go ahead and continue to nibble and build up my positions. As you can see from last week, um, on the 2nd and the 3rd of June, I acquired more shares of Humble, total of about 200 shares and about 800 shares of Humble. I'm sorry, Forwardly. Now for my, the Humble Financial ETX, this is where we stand right now. Uh, I'm in block three, block five. Block three, I'm down uh, 23%. Block five, I'm down 15%. Much improvement over the last week. Uh, we all know what's going on when it comes to the crypto market overall. The overall market in crypto uh, pretty much was going through a major correction over the course of the last uh, few weeks. And this here is a more visual chart of uh, my ETX uh, performance. Um, we have about three weeks up under our belt. And if you notice the first three weeks, uh, we had a, uh, a positive uh, return on investment the last three weeks overall. Now we're down uh, 19%. Uh, current value of that initial $1,000 uh, invested, the current value is $800. $14.02, which is a, a net loss of 19%. It's starting to improve. I can see the improvements here. As you, see, as you can see, we, we've seen an improvement last week when it comes to the price of Humble. And also, I'm starting to dig my way out of that hole when it comes to Block uh, 3 and Block 5 and the uh, Humble's financial ETXs. Uh, as you can see from that interview, uh, I think there was a huge missed opportunity. Overall, good interview. I think that there was still a missed opportunity, especially when Charles Payne opened it up for the, the NFTs. Uh, I think we sh definitely should have mentioned, you know, what we had going on with Tickery, which he did, but also as it plays into effect with Monster as it plays into effect with the collaboration with Athletes First and also talking about our NFT gallery. Uh, that was the missed opportunity. I think at that particular point, we could have had a home run with that, but that's okay. Overall, still a good interview. All right, guys. Hey, that's going to do it for this week. If you got any value out of today's video, please hit that like, subscribe, and notification button. Hopefully, we can have that third week of price increase. With that being said, guys, I will see you next Sunday, if not sooner. Take care. Bye-bye.